Hey guys, and welcome to today's video. In today's video, we have an exciting challenge ahead. We'll be solving a real world data problem for our client, Globex Retail, and you'll have the opportunity to join in on the action. Get ready to sharpen your data analysis skills as we delve into solving this data analyst problem. To set the stage, let me give you guys a bit of context. Globex Retail, a multinational corporation, wants to gain actionable insights into the sales performance of different product categories across their stores. This analysis will help optimize their marketing strategies and improve inventory manager. As their trusted data analyst, it is our job to understand their requirements and deliver a data visualization that meets their needs. So in a short summary, you know, summarize, this means that you're going to imagine that you are a data analyst at Globex Retail. The marketing team wants to understand the sales distribution of different product categories across their stores and they are interested in identifying top selling categories, uncovering trends and gaining insights for informed marketing decisions. Before we jump into the data analysis process, we need to schedule a meeting with the marketing team at Globex Retail. So during the meeting, what we're going to focus on is what you see on the screen right now. Now, basically, what is it that we ask them about? And the things that I want to ask about is the scope of the analysis, the desired insights that they want and specific metrics or KPIs that they want to track. And then we got to ask ourselves, what did we learn? This is what we want to keep in mind as we keep working with solving this problem. So we learned that they want to analyze sales distribution by product categories across all stores. They want to identify top selling categories and understand trends and track year over year growth for each category. Now, what you can do is I haven't written the questions that we asked, but if you want to do it as a practice, you know, try, try to write some questions that you would have asked if you had that business context present it to yourself. Armed with the business requirement, we'll dive into the dataset and jump into Power BI. You'll find the link to download the dataset in the video description, so make sure to grab that and follow along. We'll explore the columns store, product category, and sales amount, and by leveraging our data analysis skills, we'll uncover valuable insights that will drive our data visualizations. So let's take a look at getting the data into Power BI and start to do some evaluation of the data we have, and then start to build the actual analysis itself. Now, I'm just gonna show you guys, this is where we wanna end up. You know, we have sales by different months, we have the product categories, and then we have some, some different ways of showing it. This is where we wanna end up. Let's go back to the start uh, and, then, and then build this. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to get data and Excel workbook. Then I have the data file, and like I said, you can find this uh, link in the description. When I click that, it's gonna to start to look at the file and see, okay, what do we have here? and we want to fetch data into Power BI. So I'm going to select my table and then I'm going to go to transform data. Now, right now it's just setting up a preview, but it's fine. I know what the file, look, file looks like. I don't need to preview this. So I'll go to transform data and it's now going to start to load data into Power Query, essentially Power BI. Um, so then we can, we can uh, you know, see what we have. We have a product category, we have the date, we have the sales. You know, if I want to see which unique values do we have in the product category, I can do that easily here. I can see that this is a text. You can see that on the, the, the ABC icon. This is a date and this is a number. Not going to spend too much time in Power Query, but this is where you get data into Power BI. This is ba basically the data load module of Power BI. Close and apply. It's going to now push this data into Power BI and you'll see here on the right side, You'll see there's going to be a table that shows up. Basically, so we have some data. Um, and and you know, if we think back to the context, I mean, business context and what we learned, we want to see some analysis year over year, you know, over time and per categories and how things developed. That is more or less it. There's no need to make it any more advanced than that. So what I like to do is I like to add these things we call slicers in Power BI, which is basically just a, a filter. Now I'll, I'll add product category. And that's going to... Uh, become a drop down, which is uh, just fine. Um, I'll go Control C and then you know, Control V to to paste it. I will change this to a slicer settings drop down, and I'll leave that up here. Product category. Um, I'm going to change it to go into my date hierarchy. Let me show you guys that. Then we're going to drag out the year, remove the product category. So already I can see I only have one year's data. We're going to come back to that when we talk about the year-over-year -year analysis. Um, 
Also, if you click on the, the canvas, you can see here on the right side, now you can format your report page. We're gonna go to canvas background, give it some background just so it's easier to see the, uh, the differentiation between the different objects. So we have here, control C, control V, down, shift, arrow down, let's drag in month. Great, so now I can navigate, you know, I have slicers now, I can navigate across the year, the month and the product categories. Let's add that up here so it's nice and aligned. Shift down, great. Now what did the end result look like? This is what it looks like. Sales by month, category, and, and, and a combination. Great, so we need a measure, we need a calculation. I could drag this out and, and it becomes a sum of sales, but I wanna be specific. Uh, and I mean specific, but I want to create a calculation, a measure, not just trust that the data has, you know, that the sales uh, column is a number and that it works automatically. I don't like that. I like to be specific. So we'll go right click on the table, new measure, and we'll just call it um, total sales, which equals sum of sales. Perfect. Great. Um, then I believe I had a line chart on top, so I'm gonna go line chart, align it, shift to the right, give it some room, drag it down, a little bit to the right, let's go total sales on the Y axis, and we'll go month on the X axis. Great, now we can see some sales over time. Turn on the data labels, looks good. Just for the sake of, sake of it, let's, let's uh, add some thousand millimeters. Perfect. We can see total sales by month. It went down in the beginning of the year and then it increased significantly. This is for electronics. If I remove that, okay, then really March to April, something big happened. Um, don't know why, but, but good to know. Control C, Control V, we get a duplicate of this. Perfect. Now I'm gonna turn this into a bar chart and then I'm gonna drag product category. I'm gonna drag it to the Y axis, remove the date and month suddenly we have a bar chart which is sorted by sales by product category. Now we can see how have sales been over um, X number of months and we can see it per category. We're starting to solve the stuff that we, we outlined before. You can notice I'm not just building random stuff. It might seem like that, but I, I remember that what it is that we're trying to, to solve here. Data labels, values, and display in this, oops. None, so we get the we get the full amounts. Great. I'm gonna go Control C again. Control C, Control V. The great thing about that when you when you copy paste stuff like that, then whatever formatting or changes you have done, it sticks with you. And I think that's that's nice. You don't have to redo a lot of formatting. Great. Now we have two charts, two bar charts. I'm gonna click this one, which is a matrix uh, table. So I click that, product category, total sales goes down, month on the column, so it goes from left to right. So now I can see you know, some of the stuff visually and I can see some of the stuff tabular. Right click on total sales, conditional formatting, background color, let's go white, add uh, middle color, actually the middle color is white, we'll go gray on this one, blue on that one. A little lighter on the gray side. So now it'll format the backgrounds and you can see um, who, who has sold the most is clearly electronics. Um, but this is an example. Uh, you know, now we've, we looked at the business context, we asked ourselves some questions, and now we have taken a look in Power BI and we can already see that electronics is doing very well. Um, you know, in March to April, there was, a, there was an increase, which we could uh, look more into if we want to. We can click around and see how some of the specific stuff has, has um, gone over time. You can see toys had a decline and then an, then an increase. So now you can basically play around and this is something we could have passed back to the marketing department and said, now you have the data. These are the things that I've learned, which, are, which we're just gonna go into, but you can also click around in this one. You know, we can publish this and then they could, they could also work in the data if they wanted to. After our initial analysis of the data and what we have done so far, you can see that a bar chart is very suitable for visualizing sales distribution by product category. And if you want to see the data over time, you can see that we have utilized a line chart for that. Um, you know, we've done some color coding to, to make it pop a little bit more when there were some high and low months, but otherwise not that uh, much that we have done here, which is too crazy. 
So now we've done some initial analysis on the data. We've created the dashboard and we have some key insights that we can apply. And, and what's great about this is when we look into the key findings and the recommendations we can derive from this analysis, you know, we can uncover trends, patterns, and actionable insights that will help Globex Retail optimize their marketing strategies and improve inventory man management. So this is where the real magic actually happens. You know, one example is that you can see that electronics is top selling the top selling category, followed by clothing and then uh, toys and home decor. Um, you can also see that there's too little uh, data for doing year over year growth analysis, which is something that we should um, give them a heads up. And then we can also see that, you know, electronics is doing very well. Maybe they should expand on that. And then maybe they should invest more into books, beauty, automotive, and sports. You know, it's, it's a little bit different how you see it and, and what you want to communicate back. So there you are. Congratulations. You have just tackled a real world data problem and hopefully gained a little bit of hands-on experience with data analysis. Remember to download the data set from the video description to try it yourself. I'll also add the Power BI file the same place. You'll find it in the video description if you want to look at that. I hope you enjoyed the video and that you'll learn something along the way. If you did, then don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel if you want more exciting data challenges. And if you want to learn more with me, then you can check out some of the other videos that you can see on the screen right now.